this is the Presona Studio Lab 1642 AI, the second generation of digital soundboard from Presonus. We're going to look now at the equalization settings in a little bit more depth, and how do we go about getting a good equalization for a particular mic. So I'm going to speak into the mic, and hopefully you can hear clearly enough the difference in the sound from, what, from the changes that I'm making. So we're going to start with our low frequencies, and the very first control that we have over our low frequencies is our high-pass filter. And I'm going to turn this all the way to the bottom to off, meaning that the high-pass filter is making no change to the low end of my sound. Now I'm going to raise that up, and you'll see the little green light going higher. And hopefully, as we go higher and higher, you'll begin to hear a change in the sound. Do you hear how my sound isn't as boomy as it was before? It's a little bit clearer and less muddy. That's because we're cutting out some of the low spectrum. So we're choosing a point, and after that point, the sound just drops right off, off the edge of a cliff, and it cleans up the sound a lot. But if I'm singing, then there are a lot of my low notes that aren't going to come through very clearly. So if I'm speaking, we might want to turn the high-pass filter up, not quite this high, but nice and high, so that the clear, crisp sounds of my voice come through, while the boomy bass sounds don't come through. But then maybe we want to just add in a little bit more of the bass frequencies, so that it sounds a little bit more full. Or if I'm singing, maybe we just want to let all of those bass sounds come through, so that if I'm singing Sweet Low, Sweet Chariot, then we can get way down there. So that's the first thing that we have to affect our equalization. Then we have our low equalization. Now currently, this is a bell curve. So the sound sort of comes along and it either goes up in a bell or cuts down in a bell. And so we're, we're taking the spectrum, the frequency, and we're picking a particular point in the frequency by sweeping the frequency dial back and forth, and then we're either raising that up to give a boost to the gain, or we're dropping it down to cut the gain. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk into the mic and raise it up in the low frequencies so that you can clearly hear what happens when I turn this frequency back and forth. So now I'm sweeping the bell curve back and forth throughout the frequency and you can hear how my sound is changing. That's a very different sound than this sound. This sound, this sound. This sound, this sound. I'm not doing anything different with my voice. That is certain bass frequencies being more or less emphasized. So we're going to find a place where we've got some nice meaty sound in there and we'll probably do a bit of a bass cut at that point just to clear out some of the sound that doesn't absolutely need to be there. And let's make that a shelf actually so that it uh, just flattens right out. Now we'll move on to our low mid frequencies and again we're going to boost them up until they're louder than we would normally want them. And can you hear now how there's sort of a bit of an edge to the sound? It's not very pleasant. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sweep through the frequencies and now my voice sounds kind of fluty and there's a bit of resonance and uh, ring to it and that doesn't sound very good either. But here at 185, that, that's got a lot of intelligibility to it. So maybe we want to leave that just a little bit higher and so we've done just a slight boost to that point in the frequency. And again, we're going to move on and we're going to boost up our high mids. And now this is sounding a little bit harsh and brittle. And that doesn't sound very good. So we're going to keep on sweeping through the frequency until we find the point where, oh, that sounds nice. That's good. But we're already sort of uh, dealing with that frequency over here if we want to. Uh, so let's take it back up to where it was a little bit harsh and grating. Yeah, right there at the 2000 kilohertz. Uh, frequency and we're going to cut that down a little bit and so now we're moving some of that harshness out of my vocals. 
So do you hear now the difference between this sharp harshness and this where it's a whole lot smoother and nicer? And so we're cutting out some of the unpleasant sounds. And anytime we're cutting out, we want to use high Q because that shortens the amount of spectrum that we're affecting. Whereas any time that we're boosting, we probably want to take high Q off because that broadens out the frequency range that's being affected. And as a general rule, when you boost, you want to boost broadly. And when you cut, you want to cut sharply and just take out a narrow slice of that spectrum and get a nice narrow bit of spectrum and then just cut out just that one little piece of the spectrum. Now here we are in our high frequencies. And again, I'm going to boost it up a little bit so that we can clearly hear what's going on. And again, we're going to sweep through and find the place where we get either a good sound or a not so good sound. And again, this is on shelf. And so we've just created a shelf for us and we're just moving that whole shelf up and down. And so I'm going to find a place right about here. Yeah, that sounds pretty crisp and clear. So one of the tricks that you can use when you've got a lead vocalist with several backup vocalists is that you can turn down the high IQ a little bit for your backup vocalists and you can turn up your high, IQ, high EQ a little bit for your lead vocalist. And the reason why we do that is that the very highest frequencies, when you move away from a person that you're speaking to face to face, the high frequencies are the ones that first get filtered out by distance. The base frequencies carry a long way. The high frequencies, they're, they're short and they just fade out a whole lot quicker. And so the atmosphere around us naturally filters out high EQ. And so by turning down your backup vocalists, they sound like they've taken a step back. And by turning up your lead vocalist, it sounds like they've taken a step forward towards the audience. And it's a, a psychological cue that the voice with the abundance of high EQ is the voice you should listen to the most. And so when people are trying to sing along with the melody, whoever's singing the melody should have a slight boost in their high EQ. And everyone who's singing a harmony should have a slight decrease or cut in their high EQ, and that will give people a good psychological clue that they should follow the voice that they can hear clearest, and the one that they hear clearest is the one that seems closest, and the one that's closest is the one with the boost to the high EQ. So that's how we do a, a basic setup for our uh, equalization. And what we're going to do now is we are going to save that equalization to a preset. So I'm going to come up to where we've got uh, an empty channel. So I'm going to go to preset 90. And then we can go through and name the channel using this, but that takes way too long, so I'm not going to do it. And then we push store, the store button, to save those settings. And then, as we showed you in a, a different video, you can load those settings back out and have them available. So the first time that you set up a microphone with this system, you're going to want to take the time to set the high pass filter and the gate and the compressor and the equalizers and get all of that dialed in exactly where you want it and then save it. And for a particular voice, using a particular microphone, you've got 50 presets in there that are factory default, and then you've got another 50 that are user presets that you can save over top of and fine tune the particular microphone to the particular voice or instrument for every single piece of equipment and every single uh, user that you have. And then when it comes time uh, for, for the event, uh, Sunday morning for the church service, uh, then you can simply load that person's settings into memory and each channel takes about five seconds to set up as long as you know which preset is theirs and you don't have to go searching through the presets. So with this board, you spend time up front getting it all set up right 
But once it's set up, it's very quick and easy to get it set up again for the next session. And so that's how we use EQ.